This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. The complaint today is that the walk-in freezer is, is turning on and off downstairs. At least the way they think it is, is that it ranges from zero to 30 degrees and it's been doing it for about a day or so. Um, I went down there, they have one evaporator fan motor that is bad, I'll show that in a minute. But there's not a massive amount of ice buildup or anything and it's about 28 degrees in the box right now. I came up onto the roof and the compressor is not running and the condenser fan motor is running on the left it does not seem like it's going fast enough and the one on the right is barely running so we're gonna pull this cover off and get dig into this and figure out what's up okay so we're gonna get our meter out and check voltages the compressor is hot to touch we're gonna check uh, compressor contactor down here is pulled in so we're gonna check voltages now All right, so I'm gonna check the top of the contactor, which is line voltage. Line one to two is 201. Line two to three is 204. And line one to three is 203. So we have 208 volts, three phase coming into the contactor. Let's test out. One to two is 201. Two to three is 204. One to three is 203. So we have 208 three phase coming out of the contactor potentially going to the compressor. We can open this guy up right here. I'll pop it open and we'll test voltage at the compressor. More than likely, let's cross our fingers. We're off on internal overload, safety protection. I'm guessing because we have a bad condenser fan motor, but we will check voltage to verify that the motor is in fact bad. So if I follow, we've got two motors and we've got two sets of wires. This is one motor, this is one motor right here. And if you follow those over, each of those goes to line one and line two. So both of our condenser fan motors have 208 volts and that right motor is not running. So the right motor is bad. Um, but we need to test to see if the compressor is off on thermal or internal overload or what. So I popped the cover off the compressor, just this little cover right here. And we're gonna test voltage to see if, uh, if the compressor has voltage going to it. So we're gonna test one to two. We have 201 volts, one to three, 202 volts, and three to one, 204 volts. So we have voltage going to the compressor. And our next step is to pull the wires off and ohm them out to see if we have continuity. If we don't have continuity, then we're off on thermal overload, hopefully. Okay, so I powered it down at the disconnect. We're gonna confirm that we have no voltage. We're good. Test the ground, we're good. Okay. So now we're just gonna pull the wires off. Now, this is a reciprocating compressor. It's a piston-driven compressor. So it does not matter the rotation. It can go backwards or forwards. It doesn't matter which way the piston goes up or down. It, it's all good, okay? So now we're gonna put our meter on continuity. We're gonna test continuity between the windings. One to two is open. One to three is open and then three to two is open. So we're open on all of our windings and that's right in there. So we're gonna try to cool this compressor off and hope, in the meantime, we'll change that condenser fan motor too and then try to cool this guy off and then hope that it resets. All right, so I found this new product on social media. It's called a cool presser. Um, I'll put a link down in the video. I have no affiliation with them. I just I bought one from them um, They don't even sell them at supply houses yet. It's someone that made them themselves, but So far, it's pretty cool. I mean you can always cool off a compressor yourself But the cool thing is is that's magnetic and there's a big enough gap between the compressor and The magnets in the middle so that way it allows the water to flow over the compressor to reset the thermal overload faster so we're gonna let this run for about five, six minutes, cool that compressor off, and then uh, we'll check to see if it reset. All right, so I've been letting this run for about 20 minutes or so. The problem is, is that we're out in uh, Palm Desert, California. It's probably about 100 and, I don't know, 110 today, and their water temperature is probably 85 degrees, so it took forever. Once I cleared the lines, now that water's probably down to 80 after I cleared quite a bit of water up this thing. We flooded this whole area with water. Okay, so we're reading continuity now. Let's get a good 
1.08, so we reset thermally inside the compressor. So we're working on changing that condenser fan motor and then we're gonna try to start this guy up. But for shits and giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and keep cooling off that compressor. I'm gonna hook it up electrically, put the cover back on and keep cooling it off. And then we'll rinse off the condenser and then start it up, hopefully. So we uh, changed that right side condenser fan motor. I really wanna change the left one too. I don't have one with me. I'm contemplating going to get one, but anyways, we're going to get it up and running and then that way we can make sure this compressor is good. So now's the true test. Let's hope it don't blow up in my face. There she goes. She is running. So now we're going to watch that head pressure climb because it is 110 outside right now. So. Condenser fan motors look like they're spinning slow and stuff, but it's the camera. It's spinning at correct speed. It's moving. It's actually got a wet condenser right now, too. And I believe it has a digital control, so it's probably pumping down until the digital control turns on. Yeah, because I installed a digital control on this a while back. If you guys have been watching, if you're original OG watchers or whatever, this is the one where I put a door alarm kit on the walk-in freezer. I changed the hinges, the gasket, put a Dixol door alarm, changed uh, some limit switches, and put a thermostat, digital thermostat on it. So we had a bad evaporator fan motor right here. We went ahead and replaced it. This is the new one, and it was all frozen up with ice. So we got the ice all melted, put in the new motor, and we're going to replace the blade too. Got a new blade for it put that on and then hopefully start this thing up all right so we changed that evap motor I ended up changing the left side condenser fan motor also uh, that way we have two new motors these motors fail about the same every year um, they just the sand and the heat just wears them out it's just so ridiculously hot out here in Palm Springs area or Coachella Valley um, so we're just gonna watch this unit come down in temperature now uh, and then uh, while we're up here They've got a bunch of other condensers that are pretty dirty. We're gonna give them all a rinse. And we got nothing else to do while we're waiting for it to come down the temp. That way we don't generate more service calls. It's so crazy right now. Believe it or not, I don't need any more service calls. So while I'm on a location, it's worth it to me to go hose everything else off because especially with this location, because this location is like two hours from my shop, we are so swamped right now that we can't we can't handle the, <laughs> the service calls. So Anyway, so that's why we proactively, while we're here, like, hey, look, those condensers look dirty. We're gonna hose them all off, so. So the box is doing really good. We're down to about 18 degrees. I'm gonna write up the invoice and watch it for a few more minutes, and then we're gonna get out of here and call this one good. All right, so to recap, we had a walk-in freezer that was not working correctly. Um, the customer said they'd been dealing it with it for about a day or so. Um, more than likely what I think was going on was, well, I know that the unit was turning on and off on high head pressure, the, the, the high pressure cutout basically. And eventually it happened so much that the compressor turned off on thermal overload. Luckily that's what happened and I didn't have to change a compressor. It was a really hot day and I really wasn't in the mood to change a compressor. So, um, went ahead and, uh, cooled off the compressor. It happened because we had one bad condenser fan motor, but... Because of the location and the customer was fully aware of what I wanted to do here, I went ahead and changed both fan motors, okay? It was kind of a preventative thing. We lose these fan motors regularly in the summertime. When you get out into some of these crazy hot climates, you just burn through motors, okay? And we get a lot of blowing sand in this area too. So we did that just to eliminate another nuisance service call. We changed both condenser fan motors at the same time, replaced the evaporator fan motor that was bad downstairs, and then went ahead and cooled off the compressor. I was able to get it to thermally reset and started it back up, and everything else worked properly on the box. We were running a clear sight glass. Um, I did not wait for it to come down to temperature. I watched it come down to, I think, when I, when I last showed a clip in the camera, um, I think it was at like 18 degrees or something like that, but I think I ended up watching it come down to about 12 degrees, and then... Uh, that's when we left it, and it's it's since been like three weeks since I did that call, so everything's been working fine, and the customer was happy. Um, you know, sometimes we have to make, uh, you know, decisions like this as far as changing that extra condenser fan motor. 
Um, you don't ever want to do things without telling your customers. Uh, obviously, I go down and I explain, here's the situation. We've got one bad fan motor, you know, and I explained it, it's best if we go ahead and replace both, okay? Uh, because the cost for them to have me come back out is going to far exceed the, the extra cost for just one of those motors. And I was already there, so why not? Um, and they were totally ecstatic that I gave them the option. And, you know, that's uh, those are the kind of customers that I like to deal with is the customers that understand that we want to look out for their best interests. And also, you know, so that way I can be a profitable business. But at the same time, I want the customer to be happy. So, you know, I can make money, you know, by selling them a motor or two that I need to or that they need. Right. But then it's eliminating future service calls. OK, and we're always looking out for the customer's best interests. We're never trying to rip them off. It's not it doesn't benefit me to rip a customer off on one single call. Right. Because I want them to continue to call me over and over and over again when things break, because there's no perfectly operating system that never breaks. But if I do everything I can to make that customer trust me, then they're going to continue to call me back and I'm going to get their repeat business. So that's just the way that I deal with things. Um, I'm sure you've seen me do this in my videos before, you know, and, and again, just understand the customer was fully aware that they really only needed one motor, but it was better if we changed them both too. So, all right. Hey, thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay.